Hello, Pastor Deborah here. Welcome again to another word of encouragement for you, sweetie. Yes, you. Now, I'm coming to you out of my living room. Yeah, physically, but spiritually, we are in the Garden of Eden, that place of the presence of the Lord where you've been brought, your forever person. Yes, you've been brought here. Your forever person has been brought through the gates past the flaming sword and the mighty cherubim. Oh, it's not a little baby that looks like Cupid, the Greek goddess. Mm -mm, it's not that. It's a mighty flame, mighty protected, protecting angel. He had to do battle just yesterday. Satan was outside the gates, breathing his fiery breath, sending waves and waves against him, trying to get him out of the way so he could enter into the Garden of Eden. But God was not going to let that happen. He made me feel that presence out there. And I spoke his words of my authority and dominion as a mighty king of the kingdom of heaven, a child made in the image and likeness of God. I spoke words of authority against Satan himself. Oh, he is angry, angry. Why, little one? Because God is reaching you. God is reaching out to you in your dreams, out in the realm of the spirit. He's bringing his love to you, his knowledge and truth. That's right. So this word of encouragement is for you today, right here in the garden. Now, Pastor Deborah does not use a green screen in the natural. So you'll see strange things happen. My hand will disappear into the video. Things will happen or show through around my hair. That's my background. I've tried the big ones, the professional ones. And the ones attached to a chair. I don't like any of them. I like to just hook up my computer, my camera, my Yeti microphone and sit down and get myself sort of squared away in the center or off to the left or to the right of the picture. See, I want you to see this motion video behind me. That's from Pixabay. It's free. They're a wonderful, wonderful ministry. And I'm recording here on Zoom Pro. Now, it may not be the clearest, it may not be the most professional, but I'm just me, and I am 70 years old, working my way to be 71, and I'm having to learn a lot on a fast track. I had to help my husband this morning figure out something on his computer. I'm not that great, but I can bring you words of encouragement, and this video is to show you the realm that I live in, the realm of love and stars and light and glory and honor and beauty. And I have a question for you on this word of encouragement, number 48 of the year 2022. We're almost at the end. There'll be 52 for you to hear. And then we'll start for 2023. I have a lot of other videos to record. I'm finishing up a book called My Dear Spiritual Child. And I got to go back to the audiobook, Volume 1, Spiritual Multitudes, Agape Love, The Greatest Gift. Then I'm working in the Kingdom of Darkness. Now I'm to start two more series, one on the Everlasting Covenant and one about the hidden person, the soul of you. That's right. I have much to do, lots of studying, but today we're here together. We're out in the realm of love, peace, and beauty and honor here in the garden. So my question to you is this. Do you have beauty on your works? You see all of this? This is the, the beauty that's on the work that I do. The ministry It's coming out through me through my words, through my spirit, all the light and the love, it's not mine. It's coming from him, a copy love himself, the heavenly father. 
I am a vessel he uses to come through, to shine out, to reflect. And his beauty is on my works. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word of encouragement today, right out of your book, the Bible, written by King David, the second king of Israel. We thank you that you spoke to him. You had him write to us, sing songs. You wrote down his prayers and petitions for us that we can read. We thank you that you were in a deep relationship with him so we could learn from him. We could look at ourselves as you desire us to do. Help us to look spiritually at ourselves and at the condition of our hidden man, the soul of us. That one is a horrible, wicked creature. Mm -hmm. It's a beast of the field. It's horrible. It's been trained and educated in the world of the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. It is a beast of this natural world. It desires pleasures and for its physical body. And it doesn't care if it hurts anything, animals, nature, children, babies. It's angry. It's mad. It desires control of anything except itself. So, Father, thank you for helping us. We need your Holy Spirit in our lives, teaching us, helping us to perceive and understand your words of spirit and life. And use this motion video for them to see what should be on their works, their deeds, their words, spiritually. For all to see you and your love. In the name of Christ Jesus, amen. All right, we're going to go to Psalms. That was a book in the Bible, a big book. Psalms was written by King David, the second king of the city, the nation of Israel. And he wrote it, and this one is Psalms 90, verse 17. Let's hear David. And let the spiritual beauty of the Lord, see it all around us, life, knowledge, truth, wisdom, power, authority, love, beauty, glory. Let this spiritual beauty of the Lord our God be upon us. Can you even say that the God of King David is your God? Does your God give you beauty? Does he shine out? And what would we learn about your God? Is he a loving God? Does he hurt people? Does he try to forcibly convert people? Is he left out of your government? How would you compare the God of King David who has spiritual beauty and he desires for it to be upon our spirit, our forever person. Compare your God, whatever you're worshiping. Maybe you're worshiping a flag. Maybe you're worshiping a government or a political party. Maybe you're worshiping a certain person. Maybe you're worshiping nothing. Maybe you're just worshiping yourself about money. Mm -hmm. So King David is saying to us, to you, and let the spiritual beauty, there is a beauty that's beyond the natural senses, beyond what your natural eyes and your mind can even conceive of or see or hear or touch. There's a beauty beyond those senses. That King David is saying that the Lord has. And he is saying, please let that beauty, as you see it, be upon us. And spiritually establish you, the work of your spiritual hands through us. Let your work that we're doing 
be established in beauty and honor spiritually. Now, he helps us to see what that looks like in the world of the natural. Mm -hmm. Because we can see beauty and we can see shame. We can see dishonor, unrighteousness, evil, sin, wickedness, lies and deceptions and horrible treatment of animals, the planet. We can see it. Mm Mm-hmm. But he is saying, King David, establish yourself, you, in the work that we do. For our work is your work. So many people like to claim our ministry, what I'm called to do. It's all about me. Support me. Help me do this work. And I have to work with them and say, "Uh uh-uh. It's not your work. It's not your church. It's not your orphans. It's not your ministry. Nothing belongs to you. It is all the Father's. You must be about his work only. Speaking only his words and love. Not yelling. Not screaming. Not demanding money for what you say, getting tithes and offerings, selling your books. Jesus never wrote a book that he sold. He had people write letters. They didn't sell them. They passed them down through families, from a teacher to a student. And he is saying, let your work be spiritually upon our work upon the work that we do with our spiritual hands. I can lay my hands on you just through this spiritually. I can speak to Satan without even opening my natural mouth. I can think just like Christ Jesus did. And deliverance happens. Healings happen. I'm working in the realm of the spirit through beauty of love and peace and joy. Mm -hmm. So David is saying, let your spiritual hands of beauty be upon us. Yes, the spiritual work of our hands, will you establish them in beauty? If you are not representing God of King David, if you're trying to sell yourself, sell his work, I see it all the time on social media. It's all about you, just you speaking. You have no teams of prayer ministries. And when you do do deliverance, you yell because you're trying to prove the power. You don't have to do that. Satan is not hard of hearing. In the realm of the spirit, it does not hear this at all. I can think it because it's my spirit that's in charge. Is beauty dominion? Yes. But it rules through love and peace and joy. This beauty that's upon my works, Pastor Deborah, the works I do for him, for the kingdom of heaven, they're his works. He's in me, working through me to reach you. His works are my works. His heart is my heart. His ideas and purposes became mine. We are one. Mm -hmm. And it's done in beauty. So the question to you, do you have beauty on your works? Are your works even the works of the Lord? If you're in government. And you don't begin in prayer and give God of King David, not Mother Mary, not another God, but the God of King David. If you do not welcome him into your government every time and have prayer, if you make laws against his laws, there's no beauty on you spiritually. There's no beauty on your work, no honor and glory. 
is all a work of satanic spiritual things in your soul for power and control. So ask yourself, do you have beauty of the Lord God of King David, of love, joy, and peace? Would you say beauty is on a law if it will kill a baby in the womb? Would you say beauty is on your works if you lie to people who elect you? Would you say beauty is on your work if you are corrupt, selling your family for money? Would you say beauty is on your work if you do not recognize the God of King David of Israel? No, you do not have this kind of spiritual beauty. You are not working for him, but you can be. And this word of encouragement is to help you look at yourself and the work that you do in your dreams, your thoughts, your attitudes, your concepts, how you talk and treat other people. Do you tell other people to do something and you don't do it? Do you live as a, the elite, that we are the powerful controllers? And we are going to program your children to be what we want them to be. Then you have no beauty on your works. It's evil and wicked. It's satanic, unrighteous, filled with horror. It's not pretty. See it all the time on the news. I hear what's going on. Blaming people as terrorists and domestic terrorists who disagree with you. They have a right to disagree with their politicians. They have a right to speak up, but you don't like it because you want to be the king or Satan building a one world government controlling everybody. There's no beauty in that. That is not the work of love, joy, and peace of the Most High God. Hearts and love and stars and light do not come from you spiritually. Flames and smoke, terror and torture come from you. But if you want to be a person who has beauty on your work spiritually and out of your words and everything you do, is a reflection of the ministry of the Most High God of King David. And it's fulfilling Isaiah 61 and 62. And it's fulfilling the work of the cross. And it's reconciling every human spirit trapped in the captivity of the soul by giving a, a Hebrews 4.12 and applying the victory of the cross. That's beauty on your works. If you're not doing that, your works are not beautiful. They don't line up with this. They don't line up with love and joy and peace, the kingdom of heaven. And there's no beauty on what you do. But if you want that, well, we can help you. First, you come to this altar and you ask God to forgive you for doing some other ministry, for being an evil, wicked minister and not having beauty, his beauty on your works. And if you're not even one of his ministers yet or his children, we can make that happen too. To say, I believe in the God of King David, the God of beauty, the God of love, joy, and peace. And I want him to be my father. It's done. The victory of the cross is applied to your life. You get a Hebrews 4.12. You come out of the soul. You're birthed a new creature. That's right. Now you can hear him. You can perceive his beauty. You can see it spiritually. And then you'll go back in your soul and you will be different. All of that can happen right now, right here if you desire it by your free will. He will not force you with a sword. He will not belittle you. 
He will not threaten you, force you in any way to believe in him, that he loves you, and that he has beauty to give you. If he did, he would be a rapist. He is not that. He will wait patiently. He will speak to you through others' words. He will come to you in your dreams. He will help you when you're under attack. When there's no way of escape, he will help you to have an out-of-body experience. When you can't stand the abuse and the torture, he will help you create others who can. He was always protecting the forever person. It might be a little one, but he's there if you want him. And he loves you so much. And he wants to put his beauty, his righteousness, glory, and honor on everything you say and do spiritually. He wants your spirit to shine out like a star, a heart out in the darkness, just like it is here, the realm of the spirit. So then go, oh, there you are. Oh, Look at that beautiful spiritual being. Everything their words say are beautiful, filled with honor and glory. It is here for you. Dear Father, we thank you for this word of encouragement from King David, asking us to look at our work spiritually and our soul and our physical body and see, is your beauty on it? Are we honorable, righteous people? filled with love for nature, the earth, animals, creatures, other humans? Are we even knowledgeable of you? Father, many of them don't even know you exist. They believe you're a heathen, you're unrighteous, and they serve other gods. Father, help them to know the truth. Only you can do that through your Holy Spirit, for it is a spiritual knowledge. They must have. Their heart must cry out to you spiritually. So you can make them a spiritual work of your hands that you feel with beauty, glory, and righteousness. Make it happen, Father. So be about your work right here in the garden. Bring forth these precious ones and then work with them. So that the works that they do in the realm of the spirit have your beauty on them. In the name of Christ Jesus, amen. It's done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Out you come like the hearts and the stars. And beauty is on you. Filling you. Renewing you birthing you anew because of him and his love for you. I'll see you next week in another word of encouragement. Bye.